So when you remove the liner out of the, the back of the car and the boot, uh, this is what you're going to be faced with on the left hand side. This is the pump with the insulation around it. Uh, the first thing you want to do is just get a 13mm, just loosen that nut off a few turns, it's a nylock nut, uh, and then that can actually just slide straight out of the bracket and then once you've done that you can remove the bottom and also remove the top. And what you'll find, this is an older style pump, so when you uh, if you look and you've got two solenoids here, this is the older style, if it's only got the one at the top up here, then that is the, the newer style, I think they changed those over in about 2001, but there's a few differences inside the distribution block in here, but the rest of it seems to be pretty much exactly the same. Obviously the reservoir, that's actually going to be over the top of that, but I've just removed that. But to remove the electrical wiring, uh, all you're going to do is lift up the other side here, and then just get some pliers and pull off the, there are four connections there, there are two for the for the temperature sensor as well as two for the motor itself. Uh, just get some pliers and just pull those off and put that aside as well as just uh, unclip both of those for the solenoids and they can just be moved off to the side. For the hydraulic connections, both the top and the, uh, the side one here look exactly the same. The hydraulic uh, lines are held in just by this little clip thing so they when it's in its release mode like that you can actually just plonk them straight in there there are o-rings on the inside that seal everything and then you do that and it actually just locks everything in place and with it locked in place that little clip goes on it which holds against one of the hydraulic lines to make sure it can't actually come loose so to remove each of those you're going to just get a small screwdriver pry underneath there because it's going to be held on pretty tightly against the, the hydraulic line and then once that's off then you can just turn that like that and each of those can be just wiggled free just be careful there'll probably be some pressurized hydraulic fluids that have some some rags handy to uh, clean all that up and the top and bottom are both the same you can remove this if you want it's actually just that's actually loose and it's sort of i'm assuming loctite in place with maybe red loctite but really this it serves no purpose to actually remove these because you don't have access to the o-rings or anything on the inside there so i would just leave those in place to remove the solenoids this is going to be uh, two screws on each one of them you can remove that then you can just give that a bit of a wiggle you probably need to just get a screwdriver and then just leave that out uh, to get the solenoids out now the solenoids the bottom one, which is this one here, is the one that allows fluid to go back to the reservoir when power is removed from the unit, uh, which is, that's not on the, the more modern pump systems, whereas this one here is at the top there, and that's the one that controls the, the compartment cover at the back. Once you have disconnected the hydraulic lines and you've disconnected the electrics, then this whole pump can be removed, it'll still be full of fluid, um, to remove the fluid you've got to have a single plug which is in there so you're going to remove that then you can just tip the whole thing upside down and all that fluid will drain out out of the reservoir uh, and then you can uh, remove the reservoir so to remove the reservoir is a bit difficult because you have a big o-ring down the bottom um, in here which is going to, as that pushes up there around the motor, that's going to seal around that, as well as the one at the top, which sits in that position there, which seals up around the top to keep everything uh, inside, obviously. Uh, what makes it difficult to get off is that on the inside of the reservoir up the top here, there's actually quite a sharp little lip, which is designed to sit in this far notch up here. Uh, before you get to that, You'll need to remove this hose clamp which is on the top, just loosen it off and that just slides straight off the bottom. But then to get this thing off, uh, because it actually wants to really sit hard in that little lip there, and then once it gets down a little bit further where that o-ring is, it wants to sit in that as well. The way i found best to actually remove this, because in the past I've had some real struggles trying to get this thing off, is 
You want to get a, because it's got that lip there is going to be hard up against there, you'll probably have to get a small screwdriver in there just to move it a little bit and you're just sort of against these bits, that these corners, you can move that out just a little bit. But then once you actually get, it's enough to actually put a big screwdriver in there, that's actually what you want to use. But the problem is as it moves further down, you have to force it all the way down to about this position here, it actually just wants to lift this up. So what I did, so I just got some pop sticks like that, and as it moved, I would progressively put more and more pop sticks in there, so it actually leave it and push it that way, rather than try and um, like lift that sort of bit of plastic up, as it sort of gets that angle on it, and that actually made it very, very simple to actually just pop that off. When you're installing the reservoir over the top of this, it's a pretty tight fit, especially with the big O-ring down the bottom here. So make sure you get some of the, the hydraulic fluid and just lubricate the O-rings. Also this whole um, cover here for the motor, make sure that you put a light greasing of oil of that all the way uh, up it so then it'll slide up nicely. And then once it sort of gets into a point just short of the top here, is just short of the O-ring, then you give it a good push and it should just pop into place. Now of interest when you reinstall it then or when you install everything the indicator here of what the the level is needs to be adjacent to the the fill plug which is that one there and once you get to this stage this position here uh, you can remove the the distribution block you could have done that before anyhow there are just two screws for it now you'll notice I've actually removed um, some other stuff, I'll show you what that's for at the moment, but you would actually see a hex plug in there, or if a modern pump, you would actually see something, I think there's a couple of plugs there. And once you pull that distribution piece off, what you'll find is there's, there's basically the return line and the, or the output pressure line is actually that top one there, and the return line is going to be that one there. Uh, there are two O-rings, they're both exactly the same size, they're a five by one and a half, which exists in there, and they just stick in place. Make sure you grab those, because as you start to clean things up later on, it's going to be easy to lose those. Um, and they're really the only two high, besides what's in the solenoids, they're really the only two high pressure, well it's actually really the only output one here, is the only high pressure um, or O-ring, uh, of the whole system. Everything else is kind of internal where the, uh, the O-rings don't actually take too much pressure, which is nice. Right, so with that removed, uh, on the bottom here, that's obviously where that return line solenoid existed, which won't exist on the, the later pumps. But what there is on this one here is there's this little gadget, which looks like just from the hydraulic diagram, a a pressure regulating valve for the uh, for the tonneau cover only it seems a bit weird but uh, basically that will be down in there with that spring and then that just screws in there there's an o-ring around that that's just a uh, t25 to take those off which is what most of these are um, when you remove this that'll actually come out really nice you'll be able to feel if that o-ring is nice and tight which this one was uh, don't lose the spring obviously, but this one here, you'll have to turn that over and give that a good whack. You can have a bit of a look at that and see what condition that is in. And then this bit here is the actual pump itself. To actually remove all of this, or just at the start, um, there are a number of hexes around here. Obviously the one in the middle there is for the fill and drain. 
Some of these, there's a couple out there empty. The couple of them just have a spring and a ball just as a check valve. So I don't think there's too much point in removing those. This one here, which is filled with plastic on the inside, I think is the main pressure regulating valve. So just don't touch that at all because obviously that's sitting in the factory and it'd be nasty if uh, that wasn't set correct or if you reset that and it wasn't correct. Uh, but to remove uh, the pump away, once you actually get the, the reservoir off, there are three screws around here which you can remove. And that'll just pop straight off. Now on the inside here, there are two O-rings that you'll see that seal uh, this to the actual pump mechanism itself. I've removed the pump mechanism. I'll show you how all that fits in the moment, but you'll have some pump stuff there and um, just sitting there. Uh, and on this side here is where the actual motor is and what actually the thing that spins to actually make the, the thing pump. Uh, of interest, this pipe here, that stand pipe there, that is for the intake, okay? And the return actually comes out uh, and just comes out around the, the pump here. So this whole thing is gonna be constantly filled with fluid from the return line. Um, so because you can see those two O-rings there on the inside, or they basically separate the, the intake. So this is actually a suction line. So there's no pressure being pushed out. It's actually gonna just be pulled in. Uh, these O-rings I found pretty difficult to source. The outer one, is a 1.75 by 70 millimeters, and the inside one is a 1.5 by 50 millimeters. Um, they're pretty skinny, um, so sourcing those might be a bit hard. However, they are not high pressure lines, um, and you can pretty easily put them on one at a time and see if they've actually been compressed too hard, um, or they're actually gonna seal against this correctly. And if you've got leaks there, then that's actually where you would go to fix it. To remove the, the motor itself, uh, before you remove the motor, actually of interest, the screws here won't actually come out. Just the way that's put together, they, they won't uh, come out. But before you remove this, take a photograph of what it looks like on the bottom here. You can see it looks like the capacity here for the motor is adjacent to where the, that uh, cutout is for the plug for the, the electrical connectors. Uh, you can actually, when, as you'll see later on, you can actually put this motor back in four different uh, separate orientations because there are four s holes for the two screws that actually go into it. And it needs to be put like that so the actual connections, the wires are made just the correct length so they actually go in the correct spots. On the other side here, this thing here just pulls off. So I've just got some circlip pliers and I'm just going to open those out like that, put a bit of Porsche on it and then just wiggle it and that should just come off. Now, you'll notice there that there's that little uh, metal tab there which slots into there which puts pressure on the, uh, the, the shaft of the motor so make sure you don't lose that because that just comes free straight away and then you have access to the two screws that are inside there. And as you're actually loosening this, the motor will actually just fall straight down. Before I actually do that, you'll notice that there's a seal on the inside here, because all this is gonna be full of fluid normally. That seal, uh, it's kind of like a really small version of a uh, crankshaft seal. And so it's basically a large sort of metal back type thing, which has got a spring around it. So uh, it's, it's gonna hold tightly against the shaft uh, if you've got leaks going into the motor, then you could replace that. But when you're actually putting this in and out, because now that's just going to fall straight out, you can actually see as you push that in there, if it's actually going there and sealing nicely against it, and you'll be able to work out whether or not that actually needs to be replaced or not, and you can have a good look at it. But that actually looks like it's in pretty good condition. And that can come straight off, and there's our motor. Uh, the motor itself, if you wanted to replace the motor, the circuit board needs to come off, so you'd have to just uh, remove the solder from those two pins there, take that off and put that onto your new motor. The way the pump works, and it's quite an ingenious little thing, uh, the, you see the shaft here, and it's got these two slots in it here. One slot is the intake, and one slot is the output. 
So what's happening is that on the intake side, that is actually going to come from that standpipe, which is actually going to come by that little hole there. So the one on this side here is actually the intake. And on the outside there, the fluid is actually going to get pushed into uh, and out of the pump mechanism out the other side there. So how does it work? You've got this little thing here, and that's going to key into that thing that came off the motor there. So that's going to sit in there, and that's the thing that's actually going to make that turn. I'm not sure if you can see here, but each of these, there are three little pistons that go that so, are in the side here that they can they can actually go in and out. So you can see that one coming through there. It's got a bushing on the inside there, and so now I'll put it together. There's a washer at the bottom that goes over the top. There's another washer at the top. And then there's a circlip that goes over the top, which I'll leave off at the moment. That's pretty simple just to remove. And then there's a bearing that looks like this one here. And that actually slots over the top there. And as you can see, that's off center. So what happens is as this thing spins, and I'll see if I can actually get those things to spin out, but no, they're not going to. But those little pistons will actually, as it's spinning, be forced out. So when it, so it's going to draw in from one side, and this is on the inside here, it's going to draw fluid in as these pistons extend to that side, and then as it goes out the other side, now it comes to this side, they're now going to be compressed and pushed it into the other side. So that's the way the pump works, pretty simple. But the nice thing about that is that all the high pressure is on the inside here. There's no high pressure out here. And anything that's just going to leak out of here just goes into that return and back to the reservoir. So it's a very simple little pump that hopefully you shouldn't get too many leaks out of. With the pump mechanism, the little key shaft there, even though that hole goes all the way through, it'll only go in on one side, which tells you which orientation is up. Also, each of those pistons, they can actually just fall out, so be careful not to lose those. But what I would be looking at to inspect this um, is the condition of the surface of the shaft. This is steel, but it looks like it's anodized. So I would be looking at that to check that there's no scoring on that. As well as on the inside, it looks like a brass bush to check that there's no scoring or anything. Because that is the stuff that's actually going to be, the sealing of that is the critical part for being able to produce sufficient pressure. Now, I would assume that this, the pump itself, before you, it gets to the pressure regulator is gonna produce ample pressure, but if there is significant wear for whatever reason, you've had contamination inside the pump, uh, or inside the reservoir in the system, then you may end up with some damage in there, and that may be the reason for having low pressure. One of the nice things about the way this pump is designed if you look at the, the reservoir there, you can see the standpipe where it's going to draw from. It's only going to draw from about here, even though the fluid will go all the way down to the bottom. Which is nice, because what's going to happen is because the, the outlet for the return is actually that little hole in there. So it's just going to all just dribble down the side and hopefully not mix up too much. So all the contamination, any dirt or anything like that is going to go down the bottom. Uh, and then what it would enable you to do then is be pretty simple just to pull out the the reservoir and just pull this off and just dump all the stuff out the bottom and get rid of all the contamination so it doesn't actually go through it again. So I've got the roof to this position here. So obviously all the, the seats, panels down the, the sides all been removed. I've disconnected the electrics and disconnected the hydraulics down the, the side. Out of interest, this took about 40 minutes to get to this position and uh, it's unbolted from the other side as well. So this is the position where you can actually just lift the whole thing out. Obviously the, the compartment cover, you'd want to have that cover removed. So if you wanted to take the roof out, you could do that. But it's surprising how little time it actually takes. What you do is I'm going to clean out these three solenoids. I think it's this one here that's the problem. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to disconnect the valve block, which is just a couple of screws there, move that off. And then I can very easily uh, get into here and pull those uh, solenoids out. And to remove the solenoids themselves, now, so I'm not going to disconnect any of the hydraulic lines in this case because I just don't need to. Electrical connector on the other side there, they're colour coded black, blue, and white. Uh, you can just get your fingers in there, either side, press, and that'll just pop straight off. And then you want to do those one at a time. 
Um, you'll need to get the top ones off to get the, to the bottom ones. And then it's just a hex screw there to pull, uh, to remove those, and then you can just wiggle the solenoid out. Uh, a couple of things when you're removing and installing the, uh, the solenoids. I would advise having something pretty thick and soft here because when you are these released, they can actually come off or they can actually release pretty rapidly and you might whack your, your wrench against the, the solar car and damage it. So just have something there. Also, when you are installing the, the solenoids, there'll probably be some leftover fluid just on the inside. You just get a bit of that, run it around all of the O-rings because there's three O-rings on each of the solenoids so it slides in there nicely. Maybe even put it in there initially and then just sort of rotate it around a little bit so everything's nicely lubed so you don't get any deformation of the O-rings as you install it. And there's our solenoid. These are the solenoids that are in the, uh, the hydraulic system. Uh, on the left hand side here you've got the three that are in the valve block which are next to the hydraulic jacks uh, on the left hand side of the car. The o-rings that go on these are three of them and they are progressively bigger uh, from front to back. So there's the smallest one here medium size and that's the largest one there. They're the three O-rings there. The sizes of those and specs of O-rings are always the inside diameter by the thickness of it. So the larger one is a 13 by two millimeter. This one here is a 12 by two millimeter and this one's eight and 11 by two, meter, two millimeter. The O-rings for all of those with the three O-rings, uh, so there's four of those because these are the two solenoids that are on the the pump itself so this is the one that actually controls the storage cover again it has three o-rings and they are all exactly the same size so those four solenoids have those o-rings that are all exactly the same size and the last one here on the earlier um, model pumps which is what i have this is the one which allows uh, fluid to come back when you turn power off uh, to off the car uh, the O-rings for these are the same as these two here. So that one there is a 12 by two and that one there is an 11 by two. So here's how I'm gonna clean the solenoids. Just got a 12 volt battery. I've connected up to the terminals on the solenoid with alligator clips. In here is just a, a little small container with some some fuel in it, which I'm just going to use as a solvent to try and clean it out as much as I possibly can. And all I'm going to do is just activate it. I was doing it before without it in there. You can hear a slight or just a light click every time you press it on there. So I'm just going to do that over and over again and see what comes out of it. Out of interest, I've just shoved it in there and there's a whole bunch of black particles that have already just um, gone into that, that solvent. So um, interesting to see what comes out of it. In addition to just putting it in the, the fluid and activating to clean it, what I've done is I've got some compressed air and blown it through each of the ports with it both activated and deactivated. So there are three ports, one there, uh, there's another one there and the one on the end. So I've been able to yeah, activate it and just put it on the battery permanently and just blow everything out of it. There'll be lots of fluid and stuff come out. Hopefully there'll be some gunk come along with it. And... Uh, then deactivate it and do exactly the same thing. 